Hello and welcome to Gearock Farms. What a beautiful morning here on the dairy farm. Dad just got done feeding up. Cows came off a of pasture here and, and we're gonna start milking. We're gonna let the cows in, get them all tied up and ready to go. And then uh, we'll get right into milking. So hope you guys enjoy the video. So we got all the cows tied up and in the barn here, we got a couple switchers out back that will milk towards the end of milking. The, everybody looks like they're ready to go and happy. They're all eating their grain and their silage right now. But before we get started, we're gonna talk a little bit about our, uh, our dips and our units briefly and uh, go over our procedure when it comes to cleaning and prepping cows before we milk them. And then what we're doing after we take the unit off and they're finished milking. We gotta put a filter in. We actually have two of these cartridges. We're just getting this one ready, so that's right inside this pipe here. The milk comes in, the jar here. Transfer pump. There's actually a gasket down here. So from here all the way through the whole system is vacuum. Then you got your trap. Of course, that's in case something would malfunction, it overflow and then it, it shut itself off so it doesn't ruin your pump, but more of a safety net. Right before we wash, after we push all the milk into the tank that's, you know, we're done, um, we would rinse the system just off onto the floor or whatever, feed the calves it or whatever, but then, then I'll put this filter, I'll take the dirty one out. You might have a few pieces of straw and there's some dust or something. I mean, it's just, because you do not want any foreign matter to get into this plate cooler. There's that there's 52 plates in this one, and you could probably put twice that in there, but that's how many for what we got going on here. But anyway, if you get foreign matter in there, it seems to take forever for it to get out. You do not want to take them apart. So anyway, never we never push anything through there without a filter in place. So then we put the new one in and then do our actually run our wash. And then everything gets drained out after it gets rinsed and then that's in there for the next milking. Anyway, so this gets changed every milk. And then it's pretty much just, they call it a sock. Comes in a box of a hundred and it's actually some sort of cloth because um, once in a while one gets away out into the field and it don't, they don't break down very quick. So it'd be kind of like throwing your clothes out there, but it's, necessary so we just put that here where it's handy and then we got a little bit of soap we get that ready usually how much soap you use now, i'm not a scientist but this is what they told me after they we came here 30 years ago they test the water and usually has to do it how long your barn is and how big your line is and a lot of things factor in how much soap you need so you use the least amount of water as possible start out with warm water then you go to after everything's rinsed out, you go to hot water and they want to see it like 150, 180 degrees, hotter the better. And then that's when your soap goes in and stuff. So really the amount of soap you use kind of depends on how well it's cleaning. And then they, they check for bacteria like every month. And if it's high, they recheck it. So typically once you get the system down and you follow through, it's good and it's always good. But if you skip or if you cheat a little bit too much, it can catch up on you. Then you get you get like what do they call it milk stone or you know it kind of builds up and it's and then it takes an awful lot of product to get it off sometimes you even got to buy something stronger you know and it costs more money so to correct the problem is better to just prevent the problem again so that's generally what happens here it's kind of like your dishwasher 
And if it's washed right away, everything comes off nice and polishes up nice. So everything's stainless, so you don't got no pores, so everything really, you know, even our calf pails here, they get rinsed immediately after you feed that calf with hot water. They clean up real nice. I mean, you, you'd use them for your own use. I mean, that's, that's how nice you want it. So we're gonna talk about these dips. These are teak dippers. We tried so many different types and styles, and if you're in the parlors, you're down lower, you're more at the other level. So you're, you know, you're, you're able to, I like these where they can, you can almost reach in. And there's a little tube down in there, and if you squeeze it, there's a little hole there, and, and depending on the viscosity of your dip, you know, to how, sometimes you have to almost drill the hole out bigger for some of the heavier dips. But anyway, there's winter dips, you know, stuff that, they won't freeze or you know you don't want to get stuff wet when it's super cold but it all depends on your setup if your cows are in the cold environment over the warmer so this is our pre-dip this is the one we this is to be like uh almost like the soap like washing your hands or something so that gets dipped on each teat and this is a, a peroxide a base or active ingredient is a peroxide it's very expensive but we get very good results with it. We've been keeping our somatic cell counts in the double digits, which anything, I guess I would have to say, anything under a 250 is considered good, but lower is always better. Just kind of, what it what it is is infection in the cow, so there's always a little of that in everything. The lower it is, you get, they pay you a little extra premium, and that, and that helps pay for the dip and the extra, so you put that on and you and what that does is kill bacteria and whatever foreign matters on there but i like to let it soak in so if you got a little manure there or something it soaks a little bit so i'll go up ahead maybe so we got six units we primarily milk with we do have eight if i get help if i get help i'll usually do the prepping and it works pretty good you, you don't want to prep them like like 10 minutes before you put the unit on you want it when you wipe that cow so you put the dip on maybe four or five minutes even before I'll maybe do some. I'll just get up ahead, and then when you wipe them, that's when she she starts to let her milk down. So about one minute after you wipe them is typically the time you want to see a unit attached, and that's when you get the best milk let down. I know I went through this a while back. You maybe want to put that one up on the milk machines and stuff. I kind of talk some of that milking procedure stuff, but it's there's a little science to it. And the faster that cow lets her milk down, and then when that milk is is out, it'd be kind of like an empty gunny sack. If you're not taking it off, it's squeezing away and it's just wearing at her teeth. So if you take that unit off at that, let's say that that happy moment there, you got to be a little, you know, every cow is going to be a little bit different. But you just, it's almost like an instinct afterwards. Some guys got automatic takeoffs, so if the milk stops flowing, the machine will just take it off. Doesn't mean she's milked out. So you, as a farmer, still have to visually, or maybe when you we go back through with our. I don't know, you could call it your post dip. After she's milked, we put this product on. Now this is, uh, I, I just looked at the labels, I get this right, chlorhexidine. Uh, I'm not sure if I even pronounce that right. And this, this is, it's kind of really thick. So what it'll do is it'll dry up to like a little thin film. It almost looks like, kind of like if you've been working with glue and it almost kind of seals that end of her you know, so she so lies down in something that isn't so clean that, that helps prevent bacteria from getting up in her udder. In both these products, there's a lot of skin conditioners because with my hands, I mean, you might have noticed th this hand is getting really nice and soft because this is the one I use to wipe the cows with and I get the dip kind of spilled on me and this hand doesn't. And this one's really rough. I know it works because we've tried changing products when they companies switch on us and they didn't offer the same one but they got the same active ingredient or they try to sell you something and more economical a lot of them are iodine it's just a good product it's cheaper especially in the large office can do a good job too but but you get more of that uh, you don't get so much skin conditioning going so being we're a smaller herd or it's easier for us to focus more on the quality when we don't have so much we can give each cow a little extra attention so I feel like we're kind of getting a little better, better punch there, or maybe it's just easier for us to do it like that. So right away, as soon as you're done milking, get this product on, and it's pretty much before she'd lie down on you or something. You know, so now when they're grazing, I mean, they go out in the pasture, they'll graze for an hour or two in the evening or after milking in the morning even, and then they go lay somewhere. But it's usually clean, you know, until we get the flies and gets to be around late June, July into August, and you got a lot more bacteria and bugs and insects and everything going on around. 
usually your pretty safe this time of the year. I could probably get by without using too much of this product. You know, so the barn holds 40 cows. Right now we got six switchers are trying to dry one up now, which is not the easiest thing to do on this fresh grass. You don't have to take it away from the grass, but if we're milking and not visiting too much an hour, we're done or less. I mean, eight units, I mean, we've done it in 20 minutes and that's, that's if you don't have difficult cows or fresh heifers that might kick it off or sometimes you get one, a new one, you might have to stand by her and tickle her tailbone for a while so she just cooperates and allows that unit to stay on. But anyway, we're gonna get started and uh, I suppose if you guys got some questions, I'm sure there's things that are obvious to us and not so obvious to a lot of our viewers that uh, just ask them and then maybe in the future we'll cover some. So now the, the towel we use, this is pretty much what you'd put in your <laughs> in your bathroom or wherever they're individual towels. We got two different ones we use. This is the lighter one. It's cheaper, you can get a whole lot more out of a box of them than you would the heavier one. So in the winter, when the cows might be a little dirtier because they're they're in, they're confined. I mean, this is how it is. We, we buy a thicker one, which costs more, but if I would use the thinner ones, which would work, I might end up using two or three per cow at times versus a thicker one. Sometimes you can turn it over and you know wipe her again or, or give her a second dose of this, uh, this soap dip product so that she you know cleans up right. But now in the summer, we use a thinner one. And part of the reason is, is because this manure from the summer goes into our hay fields after we make our first cutting or second cutting hay. And you do not want this towel coming back in your feet. So it's thinner, it's kind of like a tissue. Once it rains, it just kind of breaks down real fast where the heavier one, maybe more on the cornfields or, or over the winter months, by the time it, you know you make hay, that's pretty, pretty much kind of rotted down and all that. So, and then we got our pouch here. And I can usually hold enough to go, this will probably hold enough to milk like 80 cows if you had them. In that so everything is on me and uh, I will start using this one when I'm part way through um, once I got like about a dozen milk or so then I start going back after with this product so it's just more of a efficient way to, for us to do it typically you just want to do it as you go keep track it's all about keeping track not skipping anybody this tail comes around and any of you have ever gotten swatted in the eyes with this it stinks a lot it's just natural for them to try to try to swat you it's not a not a bad thing but it's almost like uh we don't even realize you're doing it anymore you just kind of hold on to a piece of that and, and usually if that that might end up being the dirtiest end of her too so you don't want that These here make beautiful cows. That's a Jersey crossed into a Holstein.
here. Snack. Sometimes my wife will bring me like a sandwich. I'll have a busy day with hay or whatever, and then I'll, I'll take a bunch of big bites. I'll put it in here between the towels. Might even forget about part of it afterwards, but we got to do what you got to do. It's like we have to feed ourselves so we can take care of these animals. That's important too. Well, we got a bit of a, a break or a gap here now that we got everything started. Dad mentioned to me this morning that now since the cows are on grass, production has gone up. And how long ago we've seen a lot more of that. How it seemed well, like a Yeah, like back in the 70s, that was just normal. There was, I don't even know if I could have named maybe one or two confinements, you know, where the cows didn't actually get to go on grass. They get outside, but they, this is a barnyard or some dirt lot. But anyway, today that's very rare. And just yes, last night my milkman called me and they're going to switch the route around just briefly because. Uh, he said that because of the grass, everybody's up on milk. Well, I didn't think there was that many of us, you know. That, but anyway, it it makes a difference. They'll, and this uh, time of year is good for cattle, temp temperature wise too. It's a really nice calm temperature. 70s for highs and, and 50s in the lows. And a lot do on the grass in the morning. So we're we're mid to late May, and that's about peak for us. So from maybe the first couple days of May all the way till about mid to late May, that's about the 20th we peak. It's the protein of the grass, you know, it's the most lush stuff, the first growth. Even if we give them like a new crop of hay or grass fields or something like after second crop, it, it does spike a little bit, but very little. I, I don't know, it's just different. This is about the finest time on this operation to milk cows. The cows are clean, they're content. We, we give them some corn silage, they sometimes don't even eat it. You know, they're just, they prefer the grass over the grain, even, which is, says something. So. So that's a little tidbit on the time of the year and how much grass impacts uh, your milk production and your cattle health. And all that pastures are like our wasteland. So if we didn't have these milk cows or any kind of grazing animals, that, that would be just waste. And we're that's where the most profitable time for us. Thank <laughs> you. 
youngest one. So milking is finished, the cows got let out of the barn and now they're out on pasture again. They're out on pasture overnight and they're out on pasture during the day. And they'll come back for milking around that 6.30, 7 o'clock. And uh, they do that most of the time on their own. Very rarely do we have to go get them. But anyways, milking went really good this morning. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned a little something. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like it if you haven't already. Also make sure to subscribe if it's your first time being here and uh, share it with someone you think that might enjoy it. We really appreciate that. If you want to see more of us, check us out on all your other social media pages, all at Garrock Farms. And if you ever wanted to send us something, we do have a PO box and we have that down in the description. But thank you all for watching. Make sure to check out our other videos and we'll see you next time.